All right, welcome back um, to part two of the video, um, the lecture. Uh, now we're going to talk about this thing called the Hilbert-Schmidt Independence Criterion, also known as HSIC. Um, so the Hilbert-Schmidt. So we previously learned about KL divergence and MMD, right? They are basically the two ways to measure the distance uh, between this. I mean, there are more than two ways, but these are two ways to do it. And... and um, with MMD, I also told you that it works for higher dimensional uh, data. So now we're going to carry this idea. Instead of measuring distance between distributions, we're going to measure dependency. Dependency. Measure dependence, right? So previously, we used KL divergence to measure the, 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 the um, distance between distributions. And to measure dependency, we use mutual information to measure the dependency. For one dimensional data, to measure the dependency, it's not bad, right? So if you remember mutual information, mutual information between two distributions, it's simply the KL divergence, right? P and Q, P, Q. Simply the KL divergence between P, actually X and Y. P, X, Y, and P of X, P of Y. Right. Now, if you remember, KL divergence measures the distance between distributions. And the definition of independence is equal to this. All right. So this is independence. independence. Therefore, if the distribution is zero, then that tells you that the dependency must be zero. So they are independent, right? Zero implies independent. And larger the value, then they are further and further away from this statement, and it's becoming more and more dependent, okay? So you can see it that way. Now, we have another way to measure dependence besides mutual information. The other one is called um, HSIC, HSIC. Okay? And HSIC, the only difference is between HSIC and KL and um, mutual information is that instead of KL divergence, you use MMD. So if you use MMD to measure the dis distributional difference between these two, then you will get HSIC. Okay? And similarly, remember, with mutual information, it is kind of a pain. You have the data, you have to find the distributions and model it. Once you have the distributions, then you have to calculate this complicated integral, okay? which could be even more complicated if you have higher dimensional data. Then finally, you got dependency. HSEC is easy because you go directly from the data to the dependency. Okay? So the way I just showed you is a very intuitive way to understand HSEC. You need to understand what MMD is. You need to understand why the MMD between the two of them is small, which is zero. If they're equivalent, then it's independence. So minimum dependence. Yet if the MMD, the distributional distance between them is large, then you are highly dependent. Okay? So that's one way to do it. HSEC, by the way, was also invented by Arthur Gritton at the University College of London. So the second way to understand HSEC is, um, is that you can understand HSEC also through cross-covariance matrix. So we previously have gone through the concept of covariance. Covariance, well, you need to know what covariance is. Yes, you need to know what covariance is. Now, covariance is just one single variable. So X i is a scalar value, so is yi. So that was for covariance. But what if x and y are multiple dimensions? Well, when you have multiple dimensions, then we use this thing called cross-covariance. Cross-covariance. Now, here, xi is no longer a scalar value. It is a vector. So over here is a column vector. And yi is also a vector. So this is a row vector because of the transpose. So you can imagine... This allows us to measure the dependencies between X and Y when X and Y are both multiple dimensions. Now, 
this right here, you need to, let's go back to our centering matrix lecture. So with the centering matrix, let's see. Well, let's assume, well, I'm going to call this part just X tilde, and I'm going to call this part Y tilde transpose. So this summation is equivalent to this here due to the tilde. And now we can split them up. 1 over n is still the same, right? But we convert this into vector vector multiplication. So this is multiply down, multiply down. Okay? So, well, what is what is this thing here? Well, this is just y multiplied by the centering matrix. So y1, y2, y3 multiplied by the centering matrix. Over here is the x matrix multiplied by the center matrix. So this is the x right here transpose. Here's y resulting in 1 over n x transpose cy. Okay. And if we, this is with the data. Uh, in HSEC, what we do is we take the data and we kernelize it. We map it to RKHS. Therefore, what we have is 5x, 5y. So this right here is essentially the way we will understand the dependency, right? It's you remember we use covariance to measure dependency, but we use covariance matrix when it's multiple di higher dimensional data. And when we actually calculate it out, you end up to be in this formulation in the kernel RKHS space. Now that we have a matrix, right? We don't want a matrix. We want to find the magnitude of this. How do you find the magnitude? Well, the standard way is to take the norm. So we have a we find the norm, which here we're going to use the Forbenius norm, the Forbenius norm. The Forbenius norm is we simply take the matrix, right? The, if you have a matrix A and the Forbenius norm is simply the trace of A transpose A. Okay? So that's the definition of Forbenius norm. Following, following this definition, we multiply this transpose times itself. So this right here is the is the Forbenius norm that would reduce and summarize the entire matrix into a single number. So this 1 of n, 1 of n becomes 1 of n squared. And then we simply multiply all the terms together. Now you may remember that with a trace, you can rotate A, B, C. You can, this is mathematically equivalent to the trace of B, C, A, right? We can rotate this to the other side. It's also equal to the trace of C, A, B. So you can keep rotating. So if you just rotate all the terms inside trace a little bit, you will notice that we have X, X here, Y, Y here. This right here is just the kernel of X. Here is the kernel of Y, okay? So right here, we have the final form. The kernel of x times the centering, kernel of y times centering, divided by 1 of n. This is the equation for H sec. So all you need to know is how to find the kernel matrix as well as how you find the centering matrix. Okay. Now, using H sec is quite useful as well because it allows you to find dependency. You can use H sec to find the important features. So you can imagine if you have data of multiple dimensions, Right, so this is the data, dimension one, right? Dimension two, three, four, and here's the label, label. So if you wanna find the data that gives you, uh, that are most useful in predicting the label, you can simply find the H sec between this and this, right? The first feature and the label. And then compare that with the second feature with the label. So if you find the H sec with every single one of the combinations, like 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0, 0, 0, you can see that this one, this feature, essentially gives you the highest dependence to the label. That is, this is the most predictive feature for the label. Now, once you have identified that this one is the most important, what you can do is you can pick this and this, right? This and this 
and compare two dimensionals and how dependent it is to the label, right? And then you can do this and this. So once basically, basically in conjunction with this, what is the second most di dimension with the first dimension that's the most dependent on the label? And this will allow you to find the second most best feature, right? And now after you have two of them, you combine the two and then see which one you should add to the three, to the two uh, features that's most dependent. And this essentially allows you to go and identify the most important features. Right? So that's, this is like feature selection, allowing you to select the features. Like over here, I think it's part of our exam, right? So what I, what I did here is I just looped through every single feature. And once I loop through the features, I print out the dependence. So we can say that exercise, so this is how long you live, right? This is how long you live. So it's saying that exercise seems to have the highest dependence on how long you live. Uh, relationship is useful. And, and alcohol is not that dependent. Yeah, so the most dependent is exercise and having good relationship in your life. So, so you can see that if you want to live long based on this data, now this data may or may not be accurate, but based on the data, you can say that the data tells you exercise and happy relationships makes a person live long. Okay, all right. So you can also use ASIC for PCA, kernel PCA, supervised kernel PCA. So this, this algorithm was invented by, um, by this person, Bashan, El Nas Bashan, called supervised PCA. So we previously learned this thing called LDA and PCA, PCA and LDA. So PCA is just purely based on, purely based on variation. LDA uses the labels. Can you combine the labels with PCA as well? And the answer is yes, based on this work. Now, we remember what I just told you that the dependence, like this is the H -like equation that measures dependence between X and Y. So you can imagine that if we let, if we let, um, if we let, when we are running PCA, right? I mean, when we're running kernel PCA, what we did is we want to find um, we want to find the W vector after you map it to um, RKHS. So, so if we're trying to find W here, maybe we can simply plug this into the HSIC formulation. So let's say this, right? So this is the HSIC formulation. This is the HSIC formulation from previous. And now if we want to do a projection, so this is going to project it. And this is so, so this is the kernel matrix after you do the projection, right? So you do the projection and then you got the kernel matrix. So the goal is we want to find W. So if we want to find W, well, we can rotate this outside. Once we rotate it, we end up having W transpose W here. And we just need to solve for W. Of course, W in this particular case could have infinite dimensions. So that's not good. Um, but we have faced this problem before with kernel trick. We can essentially apply the representer theorem here, where W is sim simply equal to phi transpose alpha. So all the W here are replaced by phi transpose alpha. And I'm going to call everything here simply the Q matrix, resulting in so solving for A with a Q in the center. This is equivalent to the PCA objective. So using the equivalent to PCA objective, just by changing the Q matrix, you can essentially... You can essentially uh, uh, solve the exact same problem, right? And this is called, a, yeah, supervised. So you can see that if you have the labels, if you, uh, right, right here, Ys are the labels. So if you know the labels, 
you, you know the centering already, and you know x, you can find the projection accordingly. Right? So this is the projection that has highest dependency on the labels. Okay. Now, uh, a quick aside, if you have a continuous data, that's the, then finding the kernel is easy. However, if you have discrete data where your labels look something like this, 0, 0, 1, 1, right? Or some like three classes, 0, 1, 0, 1. You can, the way you would map that, the, the, the kernel, uh, the feature map we use the most is um, the one hot encoding, one hot encoding. The way it works is 0, 0, uh, the, depending on how many classes you have, you have that many columns. So zero would be all the first one, and one would be the second one, right? Resulting in a kernel matrix that looks like this. Now, if you have more than if you have more than uh, two classes, so all the zeros would be the first one, all the ones would be the second one, and all the twos would be the third one. So if you have three classes, you have three columns. Four classes, four columns, right? So this, depending on where you pick depending on where you pick the one that tells you whether it's class one, class two, or class three, right? The location here tells you which class it's in. And this is this one hot encoding is the most used kernel for uh, uh, discrete data. Okay. Um, and another thing you can use HSEC is clustering. You can Let's say you have class this two data sets. And if you're trying to cluster these two data sets using k-means, notice it kind of creates a separation here, right? All the samples closest to one versus all the sample closest to the other. Whereas sometimes maybe you want to separate out like this, and this makes more sense. And spectral clustering essentially allows you to do this. And HSEC is basically a variation of spectral clustering. So the way you can solve clustering in this particular case. Remember, this is measuring the dependence between, between um, the label and data. And in clustering, we don't have the label. We only have the data, right? We only have the data. So let's manipulate this a little bit. This right here is phi x times phi x transpose. And this is phi y times phi y. So now if we rotate this out, if we rotate this out, we can have the phi y on the outside. And we can call everything inside Q. So we now know how to solve this objective. The objective of this is simply the eigenvectors of Q. Okay. So you so so if we pick the eigenvectors of Q that maximizes the, the most dominant eigenvectors of Q, then we will essentially pick the phi y that maximizes the dependency. Okay. Let me let me try to explain this one more time. The idea is very simple. You have the data, you don't have the label. You're trying to find the label. So what you want to do is you want to find a label that maximizes the dependency between the data and the label. Right? You want the label that makes your dependency as large as possible. So once you once you find phi y, right, then phi y is essentially um, the eigenvectors, eigenvectors of Q, then you will ha end up with a column. So this is phi y. And this column is, is going to be phi y. And by the number of features, D. Okay. Sorry, not feature, the number of uh, clusters. Cluster is a cluster. Yeah, number of clusters. So so let's say you you want to divide them into two. Then you will pick the two eigenvectors, right? Therefore, it's just two dimension, two dimension here. And once you have this vector here, this is basically your label. Even though normally we have our label in one dimension. In this particular case, you will have your label in two dimensions. So if you have your label in two dimensions, all the data, you simply have to run k-means on this, k-means on this. 
because when you run k-means, it generates the label for you. So it will generate one. So it will go from two dimensional to one dimension and say that these are zeros and these are ones and these are twos. And that's it. So this is this is basically spectral clustering. And uh, it allows you to generate labels when you don't have any. Okay, let's see. I think I wrote the code for you here. Yeah, I wrote the code for clustering here. So you want to make sure you check this out and how see how I did it. All right. Uh, code, right? Okay, so now I want you to write your own supervised kernel PCA. Load these data and you should be able to project the data here so that you create like a linear separation, right? Okay, and I think I think that is it. I think I, gener I wrote the code for you guys here as well. So, so make sure you read through this. All right, so that's the second leg, set part two of the lecture on HSEC. Um, hopefully that was good. All right, bye.